Hi guys, welcome back and today we have another very special video. We are ranking the Thracian factions of RTR Imperium Serectum and once again I'm back with Big Ahal. Welcome back to the channel mate. Good to be here man, this has been a lot of fun doing this and I can't wait to see what our thoughts are on all the rest of the factions. Yeah, definitely. We're going to be doing all the uh, remastered factions, guys. So uh, keep your eyes out for a few more, you know, Anatolians, Hellenistic, Greeks. And if you want to check out the Illyrian one that we did last week, the link will be down in the description below as well. But So in terms of the rankings, guys, we're going to be ranking them, of course, by the strength of the faction, weighting it heavily on the start of the game. How hard, easy is the start? How good are they at the start? But of course, we'll take into account their mid to late game as well, because we're going to also be talking about their roster, whether they've got a good roster. Um, and on top of that, whether we think they're cool, whether they're historically cool, whether they did any cool stuff in history. So um, that's the least bit of a ranking, though. But um, let's get going on to the first faction. So the Thracians are a pretty interesting culture group because a lot of these factions start with really hard or tiny, tiny starts. So, um, and we're going to start with the smallest of them all, the Asti. So what do you think about the Asti, eh, Hal? Yeah, the Asti are probably one of the hardest uh starts i would assume i actually was uh needing to buff them a little bit like i gave them a couple more units and changed up their units at the start because they were one of the first factions to get eliminated or it was pretty much like a sure bet that the asti would get eliminated before any others so um but even with that small buff they're still in a really precarious situation i mean you yeah. have a full stack of Adrissians right next to you on your west western border uh you got the you got a mix of byzantium byzantion and rebels to your south which is probably the play um i think an inexperienced player would take your army and go for salmi desos but the the army sizes are pretty equal there so that might not be worth it i think the red zed move would probably be to go straight south into parenthos and take that byzantine city yeah because you have two rebel settlements bordering it so the uh, byzantium would have a hard time reinforcing um so that'd be the starting move but after that it's like the rebel garrisons nearby are all uh about the same size as yours and then you have the thracian cg which has a full stack as well so yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's not easy. I think that should be a challenge video for you to do, <laughs> um, for sure. I mean, you could sneak north and take on the Pentapolis, which they're kind of spread out with their armies, so that could be a good. Uh, that could be like a br big brain move. Um, but yeah, dude, I would say like overall, even as you get into like the mid and late game, uh, probably a D. I would say this is yeah. one of the hardest factions to play as. I 100% I agree. I just, they're pretty crap. <laughs> they're not great. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Their start is difficult. You're not particularly rich. You don't have much of an army. And you're surrounded by bigger nations. I mean, there's, not, like you say, rebel settlements. But they're going to be hard to take. So, yeah. And there's nothing really special about their roster, I believe. I think they're pretty much the standard thracian roster aren't they so you know i think d is uh is uh pretty uh pretty standard right on to the bessie then and funnily enough i've actually been playing a little bit of the bessie in my spare time so i have a little bit of you know recent knowledge about this faction um and i personally think that the bessie is a solid a tier now I'm going to argue my case, so I don't know what you think. Hey. It, it could be that it's A as well, but um, I don't know what you think. I'm going to argue my case. Um, first of all, roster is really interesting and pretty darn good. You start with the DI Swordsman. Maybe they're not... Uh, they're about on par with the Romfire Foroi, but the Romfire Foroi do have the scares nearby enemy infantry. But I believe they're a little bit cheaper. Um, on top of that, you get the DI Swordsman, uh, sorry, not the DI Swordsman. What's the next one? Uh, 
Yes, the Bessian, yeah, they're exactly. They are they're a really good unit. And on top of that, you get the rest of the decent Thracian roster with Thracian Noble Cavalry, all that sort of thing. In terms of the land you start with, um the your second settlement, not your capital, actually has a gold mine. And around you there's about three two or three settlements that also get access to gold mines. I'm talking about taking a Drissian land here. And yeah, I think they're a really decent faction. Maybe not quite as good as Adrissia, but very, very close. And the only issue you do have is when you start getting big, you're probably not going to be rich enough to support two armies and you start bouncing around all over the place. I can tell you this. This is why I stopped playing as them, because I was bouncing from one side of the Empire to the other literally every two turns because someone had come from the west side and then the Seleucids attack down south or I'd you know Byzantium would attack in the east or Pontic Pentapolis would attack and you're just bouncing around trying to defend your land which you don't really need to do too much but that's a similar for the Adrissians but um yeah I think a solid A tier but what do you think yeah you know that's actually pretty fair for the Bessie um especially because you've played I they have three settlements Two of them are unwalled, but you really do not have an immediate threat um, other than possibly the Adrissians. Um, there's that village in between you and the Adrissians. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's like one of the weakest garrisons in the game. You know, that's an easy grab. But if you grab that if you grab that quickly, you're you're gonna deal with the Adrissians quicker. But I mean, to be fair, if you can get your army in decent shape, the Adrissians shouldn't be that difficult. But no, I definitely agree. I mean, you have some good resources. You have natural terrain kind of making it hard for the Mady or the Dendalete um, or the Antigonids to reach you immediately. Um, yeah. And yeah, the DI Swordsman and the Bessie Swordsman, you know, you lose Thracian infantry, but you gain you gain two units in return. And I believe you get the Thracian infantry guard. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Later. And the, yeah, and you get all the other Thracian units. I don't think you get long spearmen, but I don't think you're really missing no, yeah, out. No, you do. I was using them as garrisons, though. They're not really that good. <laughs> yeah, they're not that great, but you know, it's so no, yeah, I would say that could be, uh, I would say they're a solid A tier as well because, um, the, the Tribali, you could probably check out the Tribali too, even though they have more land. And I just think, yeah, like maybe late game is hard because of the Seleucids and Antigonids. But by late game, I mean you've pretty much consolidated all of Thrace, and yeah, if you take if you take the Pentapolis cities, you'll be getting a lot of money. Well, I believe all three of your infantry units, but obviously not the long spearmen, all your swordman units, so the Trallian or whatever they're called, the Thracian infantry guard, the Thracian, Bessie yeah. swordsman, and the Di swordsman, or the yeah. Di swordsman, they're all armor piercing. So I don't think even fighting the Antigonids will be that much of an issue, especially if you're mixing in some AOR phalangites and stuff like that. But um, yeah, although the, you know, the, that natural border with the Dentalate and the Maidi, <laughs> it's quite funny, actually. They, they, when I was playing, they literally just kept sending over like three units to siege down, <laughs> to siege down that settlement. And I was just like, every time I would be out somewhere like in the east or, or in the north, like fighting someone and I'd be like, oh, right. Okay. Gonna have to gather up all the generals or something just to fight these three units again. <laughs> yeah. They're pesky. Yeah. Very annoying. But um, yeah, that's a perfect a perfect um, segue onto the uh, Denthalate then. So what do you think of these boys? Ooh. It's funny because the Illyrians, I feel like, were fresh in my mind because we had just worked on them and we had to do a lot of research. Thracians um, are a little bit older. Yeah. So it's kind of like I haven't put as much thought. But, you know, looking at the map right now, it does not look promising. Um trying to think if they're harder or easier than the asti i'd say probably easier than the asti just because mm. they have two settlements they have patalia and Skaptoparum. they are bitter rivals of the Mady, and you yeah. have because you have two settlements you could probably take the Mady out quickly but they could also take out Skaptopara if you're not uh wary enough so you know you got that early challenge right there with your bitter 
rival. You take out the matey, it's a little bit more of an easier position, but then you're completely bordering the Antigonids. And not just the Antigonids, you got your the Bessie, who we just talked about, to the east of you. They could come over. And then you have the Paeonians to your south. And then you're also bordering the Dardanians to your north. Yeah. Um, which we have discussed in the Illyrian video are a pretty strong faction. And then <clears throat> in between you and the Tribali is uh, Serdike, which is a rebel Celtic settlement. They have a pretty large garrison there too. So um, I definitely say this is D tier, and I I would put it above the Asti. Ooh, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say C just to give a bit of variation, but I'm happy to put them D. We just might not have anyone in C. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. Let's, we'll let's see, we yeah. can re we can definitely reconsider again. But I to start off, I'm putting Dendalete D tier. What do you think? No, I I agree, and um, like both the Dardanians and the Paeonians are actually quite strong, quite strong nations. Like the Paeonians always seem to to get a bit of a move on and put together some pretty feisty armies. Um, the Dardanians, it's a bit of a lottery which way they go. They they tend to seem to go more towards the Illyrian Kingdom from the campaigns that I've played, but there's a chance that they will come after you or at least go into Paeonia and then come after you or whoever wins that war then come after you. Um, so yeah, no, I think Denthalate definitely not a great, not a great, fa not a great faction um, and stuck in between a rock and a hard place really or several rocks and several hard places. So uh, yeah. Here, and here's the thing, the Denthalate, they don't, they don't have any special units. They do get Thracian infantry guard yeah. Um, but uh, they don't have long spearmen, so you don't get that cheap early game infantry unit. Hmm. Um, you have to rely on your slingers, uh, archers, uh, which aren't going to do much for you. And then probably you're going to be relying on the Thracian peltasts. And then it's it's kind of like you need to get your Thracian infantry right away as soon as you can if you're going to have a chance. Yeah. And if you can survive, you know, you'll be okay because the cavalry of the Thracians and then the infantry guard should help. Yeah, definitely. But it is definitely down there as one of the, the worst and hardest factions. And, and that goes without saying as well, your land is just terrible. Like it's just up in the mountains and there's just not really much there. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, um, yeah, it's not, it's not great. And speaking of, uh, D tier, <laughs> shall we move on to Kabile? Um, which yeah. I think is a solid D tier as well <laughs> because they again are a tiny little faction sandwiched in between Pontic Pentapolis, Asti down the south. Um, potentially to the north, you've got Tylus and the Gete, but Tylus does always seem to die quite quick. Um, and I, yeah, I just think it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a faction that that seems to get overlooked in a lot of campaigns because they die so quickly as well. Um, you got the Adrissians out to your west too, so yeah. For me, I would say again another D tier, but I don't want to put all these factions in D tier. That's the only thing. But uh, yeah, what do you think? Okay, so this is actually my uh, C tier, so I don't think they're D tier. And actually, I want to make an argument for why they could probably be even B tier. Um, so they are the one okay. very unique faction, I think, out of the Thracians. I mean, we have some unique factions, but I think there's a special flair to the Kabil, Kabilians, Kabil, Kabile, whatever you want to call them, um, that no other Thracian faction has, except for maybe the Bithynians. And that's the fact that they have a Hellenistic element to them. Mm -hmm. They have some Greek elements to them. They get Macedonian hoplites, which aren't, um, the best, but they're like a hoplite, <laughs> which means they can hold a line better than any Thracian long spearmen, um, yeah. which they also get. So you have a little bit of a more of a defensive unit compared to the other Thracian units who have all offensive units. So um, you have a little bit of an element there to your army. You also get Thuriophoroi, which we know are very flexible from Red Zed's previous campaigns. Red always has two to three in his armies. Yeah. Um, so you get a 304 unit, which the Thracians don't have a 304 unit. 
Um, and then you have the Kabillion Lancers, which are basically um, a Zistophoroi. Uh, so you and get, you get some Yeah, you get some Hellenistic units, which um, can really complement the already Thracian roster that they have. They have a complete Thracian roster. They get the Thracian Peltas, the infantry. They get the Long Spearmen for a garrison unit. And then they get Thracian infantry guard, noble cavalry, uh, Hippocontus die, all that stuff. Now you have to look at their starting position. Um, you have a couple of areas of expansion. Um, an aggressive player would probably go straight for the Pentapolis. I mean, you have the belts on in the way, but that's an easy garrison to take. And then, you know, like I said, a, a skilled player could probably take a couple pen, pentapalic, uh or pentapolitan <laughs> city. <laughs> uh, you also have the northeast to expand in, but those are poor lands. Yeah. Um, and if you're, I mean, you can't yet challenge the Odrysians, but... Uh, I would say B tier is probably pushing it. I do think they're C tier because I think if you can survive early game, mid to late game, I think you have one of the better uh, flexible rosters out yeah. of this ratio. I, I'm willing to Ooh. I'm willing to work with you on B tier, but I think for now, just because the start isn't is still is it's basically the same as the Asti start in a lot of ways. Yeah. So yes, it is. I think. I like the roster stuff. I, I definitely do. If we, when we have a look at this at the end, we might jig some around and see if there's something in B tier that seems like it's on par with uh, Kabil, then we'll, uh, we might bump it straight back up. But, um, well, once... one more point about Kabile is it's a better settlement than Busy, which is Askew settlement. Yeah. So just, just another. Um, point there they another tick in the box <laughs> huh? another tick in the box yes <laughs> well um let's move on to the maidy then what do you think of those boys Oof. yeah <laughs> all right um i'd say they're below the dendalati yeah because they're pretty much the same thing as the dendalati dendalati whatever you want to call them um same thing, but minus one settlement. And again, if you take Scaptopara early, which you could, you're basically chain trading places with the Dendalati. Yeah. Um, you still have to face their army, which you guys are about equal. Um, a ballsy player would go straight south and take Heraclea Syntyche and incur the wrath of the Antigonids. Um, but then you're leaving yourself open to the Dendalati and the Paeonians. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is truly, in my opinion, a cursed start. Like, yeah. Um, this is Paphlagonia cursed level. Thracian uh, version. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would definitely want to see you do this one for sure. Because it's like, <laughs> what do you do? I don't know. I mean, you can do your best with the Antigonids to the south because they don't have a large... I mean, but it doesn't take much for them to get their garrison and Pella straight up to you. Uh, so yeah, that's... Your unit roster is exactly the same as the Dendalete. So, yeah. I mean, I am for another their capital is nothing special. It's just a regular large town. So, yeah. yeah. that's I would put them D tier. Probably worse... Been dead the latte and Asti. Yeah, yeah, I'll put them below Asti as well, actually. And for one very good reason, if you are playing on the hard difficulties, guys, you border the Macedonians, right? Or is there a rebel territory in between? I can't well, remember. You, you are bordering the Antigonids. The Antigonids yeah. surround you in the south. You have the Paeonians to your west, the Dendalete to your northwest, and the Bessi to your northeast um, yeah. but they're not going to be able to reach you yeah and you have um like if you're on hard or very hard and you're bordering the macedonians guys you're bordering the, the antigonids it's very likely they will attack you pretty much within the first two or three turns because you're so weak compared to them because it's not only the fact that you're the player which makes them more likely to attack you anyway but also the fact that you 
like they have such a power advantage over you so they will see you as an easy target um and they do have a full stack impeller at the start of the game so yes truly a curse start truly terrible i love their uh, faction icon and i'm sorry to see it down there but they have to go there there's just nothing else to be said really they have to go there <laughs> the python boys yeah exactly so let's move on to Pioneer then. And I am going to make an argument. I'm going to make an argument for Pioneer being in A tier. Because I think Pioneer is an unspoken powerhouse in the region. So Dardania, yes, we know. Decent roster. Quite powerful to your north. But their, their settlements are so spread out. So they're going to be a bit of a pain to take. So yeah, that's a bit of an argument against my A tier. But... You've got a decent starting position. If you want, you can literally march down to Pella straight away if they send their army off to Epirus and just take it. Or take some of the... Uh, I believe um, Pella starts as a minor city. Um, does Thessalonica start as a minor city as well? Or is it a large town? I can't remember. Large town. Large town. But there's a lot of rich land in that area, all with ports, all trading, all ready to go. A few gold mines as well. So you actually have quite quite a uh, a pretty nice little start that you can do what you want with. Yes, you are going to go to war with Macedon, but you can just go down there, just raid them like the Paeonians actually did in history <laughs> and start sacking settlements and make yourself ultra rich bilazora 2 is actually a fantastic settlement not necessarily at the start of the game but if you remember back to the epirus campaign guys i believe it was making as an inland settlement this is an inland settlement 4500 gold a turn by the end of the epirus campaign and that is as an inland settlement it was making more than half of my port settlements so bilazora itself is a very good settlement so, yeah, I'm going to make a fervent argument for Pioneer being uh, a solid A. And on top of that, you get access to the Agrianian Infantry, which are a really good Peltast unit. Uh, Pioneer Cavalry, yeah, take it or leave it. Can't really make a big argument for them. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Pioneer is a decent faction. Um, you know, you just made an argument for the Mighty and Dendalete start strat. It just goes straight for Pella. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screw everything else. Just go straight for Pella and hope <laughs> that they have gone off to Epirus. Um, great. That, that's a interesting. That's a really aggressive but really exploitive uh, strat. I like that. Um, but as far as the Pionians, yeah, Bylazora has a gold mine uh, yeah. resource, and they have medium fertility, so they probably profit off that. I think they can get river port. So yeah, that I mean. You have the river going through, so I think all three regions can get river port, which can help. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, historically, they were really weak at this yeah. point in time. The Dardanians uh, pretty much uh, took uh, Scoopy and Bylazora in yeah. history. So the Paeonians were pretty much vanquished and destroyed um, as a nation uh in this mod's time frame the dardanians were the stronger one and then the macedonians also were able to reconquer paeonia as they usually they used to be like a client state so um historically speaking eh, not looking good but gameplay wise as it is in 0.6.3 you know could change in the future based on the history but yes um you make excellent points i mean you have a decent unit roster Paeonian cavalry are better than Thracian lancers yeah. or light lancers. They have more armor and a little bit more skill. So they're an excellent uh, light cavalry to run down troops, but also engage in melee. Whereas Thracian light lancers pretty much just like die when they touch a unit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good strategy. I mean, we've seen in your Epirus campaign that they were kind of, a nuisance they they did not they go were, away yeah. and you you had to do some cheeky movement uh yeah. and uh confusion con confusion when it came to your <laughs> tactics just to knock them out of the game so uh and they, even then they left a large rebel army you had to face yeah. so yeah. it's um, it's, it's, yeah. beca it's because that um if you remember there was that battle in the hills 
where yeah. they Destroy charged you. they literally charged the phalanx head on and because they had the run fire for a mor- uh, morale damage stacking all the phalanx just decided that today was not the day and <laughs> turned and ran away oh that rhymed but um turned and ran away and yeah. they just ran down the whole army and i was like what the and it happened in about 30 seconds as well <laughs> so at that point that. I, yeah at that point i was like I'm not fighting these guys anymore. I'm just going to keep marching and taking their settlements. And if the AI decides that it wants to defend them, they can come and defend them. If not, they're, they're going to die. So, uh, very, yeah, they... yeah. Very infamous battle. But, yeah, I mean, A tier, I could argue B tier, but I don't really have a solid argument for why they'd be B tier, except for the history. Um, the history might make them weaker in a nerf in the future update, but we're talking about right now. So yeah, here's the other Scott. You could probably, you probably have a better army than the dead Delete, and you probably have a better hmm. army than the. So if you wanted to, you could take those out too. Um, but I think the big brain play is what you said. You take out the Southern Antigonid settlements and yeah. establish pro- Macedonia proper as your territory. And then hmm. the Antigonid at that point have lost a huge, you've gained a huge economic gain and they've lost the economic. Yeah. Uh, they've had a huge economic loss. Well, like those settlements south as well of Scoopy and um, Bylazora, just like direct south in the mountains, like is it Heraclea, Linkestis and stuff like that? I can't remember exactly what they're called. Um, the one that you, I think the one is, um, I think Bokaria has a yes, silver mine. It, yeah. And um, INA or Ayana or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one did really well for you in your Epiro mm. campaign. Well, those like areas as well, like at the start of the game, those ones in the mountain just south of you, there's not much military infrastructure. And no. the AI, like the, the Macedonians will be spamming out troops, but they're not going to be spamming them out from there too much. So that area, you're kind of safe-ish from so you can just focus on going to the rich area of Pella, um, which I think is a good bonus. I would also, they start with, how many settlements do the Pioneers start with? Four? Three. Three. Okay, cool. I was going to try and argue them at, above the Bessie, but I think, I think with the Bessie's uniqueness of roster, I think probably can go underneath, uh, underneath the yeah. Bessie. What do you think? Yeah, I would say um, beneath the Bessie because... I like I said I was trying to find an argument to make them B tier, but I couldn't. Mm. Right, Bessie, then. I think has a better, uh, situation. Yeah, right then. On to the uh, Tribali. So, uh, what do you think of the guys grazing in the pastures north of the mountains? This was a late addition um, by us in 060, and there's a lot of scholarly debate on who just the Tribali were. Um, they have a mixture of Celtic in them, so I don't think they're completely finished. I think they're going to get a couple new units whenever we do the Celts. So that will make them interesting. Uh, yeah. They do have kind of a pseudo-Celtic unit in the Galato-Thracian Warband, mm. which that unit itself is not even finished. There's only four variants, so we have three more variants to make for them. Again, waiting on the Celts. So, but with that being said, for this update right now, I would probably put them C tier. I know they start with four settlements, but these are trash. Yeah. Trash, trash, trash. You have tr- three trash settlements and one large town. Um, and you're spread out enough if the Bessie or Adrissians t- attack you right away. Um, it's going to take a bit to get there. And um, you do have two settlements to your east that you could take right away, but those are villages, mm. and they won't give you much. And then you're bordering Tylus, yeah. so yeah. you could go north um, and exploit the fact that we haven't worked on Dacia. But those are all pretty mid, mid, middle of the pack stacks waiting to fight you. So you'd have to go up with a large army and take those out so i mean i guess you could exploit dacia and get a ton of fertility and uh whatnot but i don't know they could be the b tier faction 
because you don't really have a lot of competition in your area. I mean, once Dacia is finished and the Celts are finished, Tylus and Skordisky will be different. I don't know, man. That's a I, tough one. I, yeah. I guess I guess for right now, as is B tier, in the future, I would see them being demoted to C tier. Yeah, I, 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 like I've got one argument for them being B tier above Kabile, above all the others. It's just because this is breathing room at the start. Like yeah. you're not fully surrounded and you're not touching anyone that is that powerful. Yes, Adrissians have a decent army at the start. Yes, the Gete probably have a decent army at the start. Not not too bothered about Tylus because normally Gete and Tylus just kill each other straight away. Um, but in terms of like that separation, I know you say that there is a long way to go between your settlements if you want to reinforce one and defend one. But if you just go south, like if they come up and siege a settlement, it's kind of that that breathing room between the settlements actually works in your works to your advantage somewhat. Um, and the AI, of course, only ever sieges down the earliest on the second turn unless they can get in on the first turn because of a spy or whatever equipment they've got. So, um, yeah, I think I think they've got to be B tier really, just because it's it's not easy, but it's just just more breathing room and. They're not as cool as the Pionians or the Bessie, in my opinion, um, or even Kabile. But I think that breathing room just means that they, they should probably be up there in B tier anyway. Um, do well, you... they, do, they do border Dardania. They, yeah. border, they border the Bessie, and they border Audrissians. I think the issue for them is they have four settlements. They have three in the north in the plains, and they have one in the south below the mountains. I think that's going to be... As a player, I mean, you could just say, hey, screw it, I don't need that one, and not focus on it while you focus on your northern, your three northern settlements instead. Mm. You have this Ration CG bordering you too that has a, almost a full stack, and if you take that settlement, you're then bordering the Skordisky. Um, again, if you take the two weak villages to the east, you'd be bordering either Tylus or the Gete, Kabil, Audrissians, and possibly the Pentapolis later. So really, I mean, I think the game, if I was playing it, I'd probably not worry too much about my southern settlement. It's called Tulatiopolis. Hmm. But I would probably focus my efforts on going north because if I can go north and kind of slowly expand there, I can sacrifice my south. Yeah. And for, I, I can pretty much become the Dacian faction. Again, totally will change in the future i would yeah. you know how i talked about history being incomplete mm. um the tribali are also in the incomplete category as far as factions are concerned so that's why i was saying c tier but i am totally cool with putting them in b tier uh but um hey we need someone there right <laughs> Bill, i don't know um Oh, I, I guess, yeah, above Kabil, yeah. I think Kabil's a lot cooler, and they have a cooler roster, but ultimately it's a yeah. lot more difficult. Yeah, B tier, it's fine. For for this update, as context, that's totally fine. Yeah, and if you go north, you get access to uh, some AOR horse archers, so uh, yeah, if you want mm. to just kill everything, then um, if you want to basically be Daleks in the ancient world then uh yeah go and get some horse arches <laughs> yeah <laughs> so on to my nemesis my oh, absolute geez. nemesis <laughs> the worst faction that has ever existed in any video game ever any total war any total war ever i'm trying to think of terrible factions but i, I can't worse than pathogenia worse than all of the rest worse than taras the spy thinia just the worst faction just terrible terrible everything is terrible just the roster is amazing but it's terrible the, the start is yeah the start is genuinely horrible uh, but no i being serious being serious bythinia is actually cool as cool as hell cool really cool but their start is is absolutely disgusting 
uh, at war with the Seleucids and with two full stacks of the Seleucids nearby. So if you're starting on any difficulty more than medium, you will get attacked by those full stacks pretty early on within the first five turns. You can go north up and escape across to Byzantium if you want. And then the campaign just basically becomes the same as any of the other ones around that region, like the Asti, etc. But maybe a little bit stronger. Um, but yeah, it's just a horrible, horrible start. I, I would personally put them in C tier, but I don't know what you think. Hmm. The roster is definitely way better than the Tribali. So, mm. but their start, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it. You have a better rock. You have a better starting army than Kios. And you have a better starting army than Byzantium. You also have a better starting army than Kizikos. If you get, if you go there, you have a better starting army than the Asti. You have a better. You have a probably equal starting army as Heraclea, which honestly, that was the faction that you went for. Yeah. Um, the Galatians um, are the wild card here because I think you're friendly with them at the start. Yeah, so that, um, then they, they betrayed. Yeah, you're neutral, but you're friendly. So you might be able to strike an alliance um, early on with them to kind of protect you. You do have the Anatolian CG also far to your east, just holding one settlement. But yeah, I mean, all to your south, it's just Seleucids. Um. I don't know, man. That's tough. I mean, I could see a strategy where you take out Kios first, and then you go for Apollonia Rindakos, but you're just begging for a slugfest yeah. with a Seleucid, yeah. which they're just going to not stop. And then you have an unprotected northern border against Byzantion so, and Heraclea. Um, so yeah, the, so the I, two, so the, I think that there's two tactics with them. The first one was uh, was uh, proposed by uh, Yossel. So. That is to just take on the Seleucids, right? And just go into their land, take cities, and sack it. Just destroy everything, get as much money as possible, and just kind of bet on the AI being dumb and not un not clever enough to fight you directly in the field. So, yeah, that can definitely work. You've just got to be a little bit lucky, though, in how you do that, because the AI... Yeah, it is dumb sometimes, but if they attack you once, you're just dirt. You're just done because Nicomedia is a is a town with nothing in at the start, so you only have one settlement where you can recruit anything. Um, so yeah, it's the the other tactic, which is the tactic that I'll use for the guide <laughs> when it gets done, <laughs> is to take Kios, build a ship, go and kill Byzantium on your side of the Sea of Marmara get in the ship, go and kill Byzantium and just forget about your eastern holdings and and uh, then go and be a Thracian faction actually in Thrace. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are the two tactics, but I still think either way is pretty horrible because you're, best, you're basically just waiting for doom to come to you. <laughs> I have an idea. It's kind of a hybrid. So taking Kios and Byzantium early, I think, is key. And the key is to bank the Seleucids. You, you get that kind of buffer of time before the Seleucids actually decide, oh, let's attack. You might have to, like, turn four or five. So you're risking that, but you're, you're gambling. So let's say that gamble pays off. You take Kios, you take the two cities in Byzantium. You then have one, two, three, four, five. Um, with four out of those five being pretty decent cities, three of them having ports. So yeah. that that could be, and you consolidate. Now, from there, instead of looking at conquest, you, know, you have to be wary of Heraclea Pontica. You have to, but there, I think you start, well, here's the, so actually, hold up, hold up. Contrary to where, when you started your guide, I believe... You start allied with Kios. You start allied with Byzantion. You start allied with Heraclea. That's the Northern League that Maslow yeah. talks about a lot, a lot. So with how we've done diplomacy, it would be worth checking to see if you can just go straight for the Seleucids 
and um, sack their settlements and then leave their settlements to rebel to either the CG Anatolians or Hellenistic rebels, mm. which then creates a border of buffer states to take the Seleucid eye off of you. And you only border one, two, no, you border a few. three. You, bar you have Dorylion, Cochion, and Metropolis. If you just kind of went in, sacked those settlements, and let them go to the Anatolian CG, which all three of them would, you just created a buffer between you and the Seleucids. From there, the AI would be the AI, and you may not have the greatest relationships with Chios, Byzantium, and Heraclea, and you can then focus on consolidating the North, because they're going to attack you at some point. Yeah. But, I don't know. I think it's some a good, kind of a good, good idea, but you... It's again, you still just need to rely on the fact that the AI is not going to attack your army, right? I think any strat you take as Bithynia, you're gonna gamble, yeah, literally, it's yeah, it's gonna be some type of gamble. Um, I, yeah, I would put them in C tier just because of how much of a precarious situation you're in. Um, and it's such a gamble, regardless of what you do, but definitely not Tribali. Well. I think they're cooler. They're a lot cooler than the Drali, but cooler, it's just so, start so Trabali, difficult compared. They have a harder start than the Drabali, but mid to late game, if you if you're if you establish yourself, you're way better than the Drabali. Yeah, you'll have a really good roster. Um, so I would. That's ah, tough to put them. Be I don't know. I just think that start is so difficult that like they have to they have to be here. Like the Drabali, out of all these starts, the Drabali in my my opinion probably have the easiest so like i think they have to be they could be in b below but i think i would say d below but hmm does that look right hmm that I... yeah that just seems better that seems more right <laughs> in my opinion yeah. it's too hard of a start yeah. to justify the mid to late. And remember, guys, we're going to show our actual ratings at the end, which factions we like and don't like the most. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, right, on to the Adrissians. And, I mean, this, it's got to be only one, right? There's got to be only one. I know you don't get the... Um, you don't get the Trollians, right? But you get a different unit, don't you? The Adrissian Infantry Guard or something? In Royal Warriors. Yeah. So, you know, Adrissians, it's very similar to the Bessie, but you just start out a little bit more powerful because you can take, um, as the player, right, let's, let's make sure this makes sense. As the player of Adrissians, you can take out the Bessie a lot quicker than if you play as the Bessie taking out the Adrissians. Does that make sense, or is that too too confusing? That makes sense. Yeah, you can take them out quicker. Yeah, they have a draw out battle, I believe, straight away. Or if you wait a turn, they will very likely have a draw out battle ready for you. Or they have one without walls. I can't remember. Yeah, they, you can bypass the rebel village and just go straight for Di Diopolis. Yeah, and then from there go straight to Philippo Philippopopolis. Yeah. Um, and then from there, just take out whatever's remaining in Bessapara. You yeah. have a better starting army, and so you can just blitz the Bessie. And then once you've done, once you've blitzed the Bessie, you can come back, retrain, and then you could probably blitz the Asti yeah. and Kabil. And then from there, you can consolidate your rebel holdings, and then voila, all of proper Thrace yeah. is yours. I mean, the Odrysian kingdom at that point. Uh, would be restored from mm. the glory days of old. So, I mean, that wouldn't take very long. I'd actually be interested in seeing you do it um, because I think it would be pretty cool. I mean, you have three, you would have three Bessie cities. Then you double back. You take out the ASCII right away because they may try attacking you, but they probably won't. Um, you then knock out two factions. Then you go straight north and take out Kabil. You've knocked out three factions. Then you, if you look at the rebel settlements around you, you got Debelton, Bayro, Maduatinopolis. Yeah. And down south, you could take Kipsella. 
You just that's have to pretty be... much. Huh? Yeah, you just have to be careful of the Seleucids down south. Yeah, but... that's the only thing is as you're trying to consolidate the Seleucids might get a little crazy and try to come up north. I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't be worried about Pentapolis early. I wouldn't be worried about Tribali early. No. I wouldn't be worried about Byzantium early or the or Tylus. I mean, it's basically a race to consolidate Thrace proper, whereas then the only thing yeah. that you need to worry at, about is the coasts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a very lucrative coast if you took out Pentapolis. Yeah, definitely. Um, which I think will be needed as your economic backbone to fight the Seleucids. Yeah, because um, you're... And the Antigonids. And... Yeah, exactly. I think you're, yeah, your economy, like initially is pretty darn weak but i think within with the new empire system you're going to be okay compared to last patch uh, when i did the guide um but like you say you 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 are in the race to consolidate thrace and you're the one with the the bit the best shoes on basically <laughs> someone's wearing clogs the uh like the uh the maidy the maidy and the dental arte are basically uh wearing high heels uh the bessie and the pionians are wearing like some old worn out running shoes and you're wearing like spring boots so yeah and i think have, i think you have a ball and chain on both feet <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly and, and kabil kabil is a dark horse i think kabil uh they're like you're like that guy that could pop out of nowhere. Kabil's but... riding the back of a Greek. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So, um, I think that could be the S tier faction. Yeah, it has to. Um, it has to be right. It um, has to be. But, it, but I think they have a, there's an argument for only A tier with no S tier because I think all Thracians have a higher difficulty than anybody. Yeah. But if, yeah. but out of the Thracians, they would be S tier. Yeah, like, this is ranking them in their culture group. I mean, if the Adrissians was on a ranking with the Seleucids, the Ptolemies, the Macedonians, uh, the Romans, like, they ain't going to be on the S tier, but as the Thracians go, they're the, they're the S tier. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Thracian cultural generics, again, just giving it a little bit of love, but uh, are we just just leaving it off or sticking it on somewhere? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's do B. It's yeah, neutral. in the middle, not playable. There's not well, not three, supposed to be playable. Three, there's only three CG settlements. There's uh, Apros in the south, Turizis, um that cuts off the Pentapolis in the two. And then you have uh, Radiaria, at the extreme northeast and uh, northwest bordering Dardania, Scordisky, and Tribali mm. is like that little buffer region between the three cultures, which is kind of cool but that's pretty much all they are and like i said i mean nobody's gonna play as them i mean people could if they want they actually could if they want but it's just it's just kind of like a random just very random don't know what's gonna happen type of campaign so yeah no reason for making them so uh shall we have a look at our faction rankings then so uh once again mine will be on the top and yours will be on the bottom so, do you want to talk us through your ranking to start with? I think we should do your ranking first. Okay, okay. Well, obviously we have the Adrissians at the top. <laughs> they are the best faction. Uh, and then we have the Bessie, because I think their roster is really interesting. And decent start, very similar to the Adrissians. Then we have my Nemesis. <laughs> by Thinia. See, I don't hate them that much, guys. I don't hate them that much. I actually right. really like them. <laughs> Basically because of the start being so damn difficult. I just think it's a really cool, like, unique start having an em a massive Empire's army literally on your border just coming to kill you. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a really cool start. Pioneers up there, of course, as well, because, again, I think that's a really good... Uh, interesting start you can go down into macedon and have a bit of fun if you want to tribali are up in b just because it's probably a bit of an easier faction for anyone who's newer to the game or doesn't want any of these crazy hard starts thracians are there in b just because uh you know 
it's middle of the road same thing i did with the illyrians as well uh, and then we have the the four the four horsemen of the uh, thrace apocalypse which um <laughs> <laughs> just all of those factions although you have actually changed my mind a little bit on Kabile with the fact that they have some Greek units but not that much actually they'd probably just be in D but at the top of D I think all of these factions are absolute trash and I would rather not play them but I probably will end up playing them all for challenge videos so uh, yeah. yay me yeah, I, want, <laughs> I want to see a challenge video on every single one of those because I just think it would be so interesting to see how you can survive as them, how you can uh, become powerful as one of them. Um, yeah, I think I think you have a pretty good list, though. It makes, again, logical, very logical from a player's point of view. So um, on to yours then. And it's pretty much the, like, if you took mine and, and made it and uh, turned it upside down, apart from the Adrissians. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to uh, explain explain this? <laughs> so, Kabil, yeah, I like the Hellenistic element to yeah, fair the enough. Kabilians. It's kind of like makes me think they're the closest faction to what vanilla Thrace is in Rome Total War, right? Um, without the Phalanx. But, uh, so I like them a lot. I think they have a cool history and I think it'd be interesting to play as them. I think the Asti as well are just super interesting. They are a split off of the Audrissians. Um, mm. In fact, the faction leader of the Asti is related to the Audrissian family tree. Um, cool. They're all three of them are kind of rump states of the original Audrissian state. Um, yeah. And then I have the Thracian CG up there too because Apros, which represents the Kainoi, are also a rump state left over from the Odrysian state. So all four, like, if that's why I think it'd be cool as if I was playing the Odrysians, I would want to unify the rump states back yeah. into the kingdom that Soothes had when they were powerful. Um, and then also, I like the Thracian CG just because. It represents some obscure stuff like the Turizoi in the north. Like, we don't really know much about them, but it was like a fortress in Lysimachos, kept his treasury there. So it's kind of cool. And it's just kind of like chilling there by itself in between all the Pentapolic cities. Pentapolitan. I keep saying Pentapolic. <laughs> um, and then I have like an obsession over the uh, obscure, remember? So, yeah. Radiaria represents the uh, Moesi, um, where they got the province of Moesia from. And there's like a scholarly debate if the Moesi and the Mycenaeans near Pergamon were the same people or like related. Um, so very interesting stuff. And that's why I have the Thracian CG up there. But the reason I'll have the three factions up there is just because they're all kind of like part of the Odrysians. And yeah. I think taking any of those factions and reforming the Odrysian kingdom would be pretty cool and i've even thought of like having an event in the game where it's like if you did it um you get like i don't know just like a little pop-up that says like you did it kind of like a paradox thing um a tier maybe done the lot tire together no no just no, because no, no. again just super interesting <laughs> um challenge obscurities they're from the hills yeah <laughs> Kind of like the day situates of the Thracians. So, um, and then Bessie, Paeonia, Trebalia are my meh factions. Like, they're more, like, yeah. again, kind of like the Liberni and the, not the Liberni, but they're just kind of like whatever. And then Bithynia is just more meh. It's just kind of like, I've never really been interested in Bithynia for whatever reason. Mm. Um, it's just kind of like there. And I, I just feel just like that. the start <laughs> is so probably one of the most cursed starts and i just because i don't really care for them anyways it's like why would i play that yeah, yeah. that's kind of how i find my list i just for me it's just all based on like who's more interesting yeah and um that's why i was surprised to see the adrissians though because you normally like the underdog and the adrissians is probably the most popular of the thracian factions so yeah 
it's because I still consider them an underdog compared to the rest of the factions in the world. Yeah. Um, and I relate them to, especially with their colors, I relate them to Vanilla Thrace. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Well, uh, that's our justifications, guys. Um, comment down below your uh, your favorite factions. And also, make sure that you put your faction ranking in the developer diaries discussion on the Discord. The link will be down in the description down below for you to do that ranking as well. And a big shout out and thank you must go to all the channel members as well. Zero Suit Samus, Pascal Deslaurier and David D. Thank you very much for being a member. If you want to join guys, you can down in the description down below. But a big thank you again to Ahal for coming and joining me doing these uh, ranking videos. Um, and I think that's everything. Thank you, Ahal. Yeah, no problem until until we see you again on the next one. Yeah, exactly. And I'll see you all again on the next video.